Hello, I want to talk about Tom Gunning's essay on cinema of attraction. So if you haven't read that essay, I would stop this video and go back and, and read it through because I'm not going to cover all the points, but I want to make sure that I give you a good overview of Tom Gunning's main ideas. And I should also say that when you're reading film criticism or any academic criticism, you're likely to feel somewhat overwhelmed because there's a lot of terms you might not be familiar with, there's references you might not be familiar with, and that's okay. You don't need to know all of it. It takes years to build up that background to get every single point. So go for the main ideas and underline the things that interest you. And if you're finding yourself lost, then stop and go back and reread sections because the assignments that I'm going to be, the reading assignments that I'm posting on our modules, I think all contain um, some really interesting ideas that I want to make sure that you get. So that's the reason for this video is I want to make sure that you get the main idea. So <clears throat> Tom Gunning wrote Cinema of Attraction in response to what he saw as an emphasis on narrative film in film criticism. Now, what does that mean? Um, well, what is narrative film? Narrative film is a film that tells a story. And most films that you've seen probably fall into that category. It's the mainstream, main mode of filmmaking, that a film has a, a plot or a story that drives it, um, and that story has a beginning and a middle and an end. And even if it's not set in a linear way, like a movie like Pulp Fiction that's non-linear, it's still a story-driven film. So when you see a film that's not story-driven, sometimes you don't know what to do with it because it's so out of the ordinary, right? We might call that avant-garde or, you know, different... Diff uh, definitely um, anything that doesn't fall within a narrative framework, uh, we see as somehow challenging the norm because it has become such a norm to have film be a storytelling medium. So Tom Gunning argues that because of this, when film historians look at film, they often see this progression from the beginning uh, towards narrative cinema, as if that's always been the end point uh, of film. And he wants to say, actually, if you look at the early years of cinema, you can see a, an important impulse, the impulse towards spectacle or e exhibitionism. And he wants us to remember that cinema is predominantly a visual medium, and it's about attracting us visually, right? Okay, so <clears throat> how does early film do this? Well, we can see this very clearly in something like Melier's trip to the moon, where he shows images of space travel. Now that might attract people because they've never seen that before, right? They've never seen any image of the moon, so that's exciting as an idea. But the Lumiere brothers' image of people leaving the factory might have seemed equally interesting because that attracted an audience in terms of its reality. Wow, this film really captures reality in a way I've never seen it captured. So those two types of attraction, Tom Gunning would say one is actuality films, capturing reality. The other are trick films, things that capture some sort of illusion. And he said that this was the main type of cinema being produced in the first years of cinema. They were films that were trying to attract an audience because they gave us some sort of visual pleasure. They gave us something to look at that amazed us and that amazed our senses in some way or another, even if they didn't have a story to tell. All right. So he also wants us to know, though, that these two impulses, the storytelling impulse and the, and the impulse towards spectacle or exhibition often go together. And if you take something like, um, well, Trip to the Moon as an example, you can see this very clearly that there's a storyline, of course, right? There's a story, but at the same time, Melier is trying to impress us with his visual effects. Similarly, in A Great Train Robbery, there's a storyline there, but what happens when the gunman looks at you at the end and he points his camera? I mean, sorry, he points his gun right at you. Um, he breaks that fourth wall. And 
that it might be a shock, right? Oh my goodness, this guy's pointing a gun at me. Um, that is a visual shock uh, that is added to the story tell, the storytelling. So they're going together in a way that makes it compelling for us to watch and attracts our attention. So <clears throat> how do films attract audiences today um, might be the end point of this discussion. We might think about whether spectacle and narrative always go together in the films that we watch. Do those, is there a balance there that's, that's changed over time, whereas maybe some films tend to be more spectacle, others tend to be more narrative? Now, Gunning makes the point that genre is an important ingredient here, that some genres tend more towards spectacle than others. And he mentions the musical as an example, that the musical is definitely about spectacle, right? Costumes and color and all these things that we expect to see in a musical. <clears throat> we might also add something such as an action-packed film with explosions that is a genre that attracts us visually. What genres don't rely as much on spectacle? These are things I want you to start thinking about as we move towards the move through the semester. All right. So make sure that you get this main idea from Gunning about the cinema of attraction, um, that cinema is not just narrative, but it also attracts us by giving us some sort of visual pleasure. And these are some ideas that you might utilize in your discussion this week.